Those yeah, were four I, seasons. I remember drinking this uh, during the Super Bowl where we made queso fundido and we had chips and guac and salsa. And I'm going, <laughs> holy moly, this is fantastic. Holy moly. Thank you for correcting You're me. You're welcome. This week, we discuss our top beers of 2021. This is episode 71, The Maltese. The stage is set. The lights are up. It is the 2021 Maltese. We need a theme song for The Maltese. No, I got one. Okay. Like like mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. It was, I realized listening to last the last one, it played for way too long. Welcome to The Malting Hour. I'm one of your hosts. Tony Golick joined always with Brandon Winninger and spreading his holiday cheer everywhere. Clark Fetridge. Ooh. Here for I, you and yours. I don't know why I took a sip of beer as you were introducing yourself. This sucks, Clark. I can't see you. <laughs> yes, let me shuffle on down to Omeletteville, California. Oh, I can't wait to hear this. Good. Now I know what I need to edit right away. <laughs> Clark out of the show. (laughs) Uh, You guys, this is our second time doing our Maltese, which is kind of our, not kind of, it is our rundown of our favorite beers of the year. And first time fully in person, the three of us. That's exactly what we're Very exciting. Yeah, last year, it was mainly just me and Brandon with a little of you. A little COVID outbreak on my side. Yeah, way to get COVID, loser. Well, technically, somebody else got it first. Passed it to me. They passed it to them. They passed it to him and her. And I could have almost got. They no, not really. I would have been there the day before. <laughs> That's a good point. That was the plan. Um, but yeah, here we are, guys. Maltese. Um, we actually. This has kind of become our. As you guys know, who listen to the show, we do a kind of a a day that we call Plop Day. That's based off of Prop Day. You guys know what Prop Day is. Bourbon County stuff, where we go out and drink some barrel aged beers, namely. Bourbon County, but we didn't get a chance to do it this year. We kind of did it today. We ended up at Revolution's Tap Room on Kedzie drinking some of their beers. That was fun to start the day. It was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Second time in three days I'd been there. Might as well head back <laughs> as much as I can. Do you want to go back when we're done recording? For sure. Yeah. I mean, because there were at least ten beers that I hadn't tried yet. There's a lot of them that I haven't tried yet. And I did a pretty good job today of trying as many as I could. I mean, the first beer I went with was a double barrel aged stout. That was 17%. Wait, I just jump right into it. No, five ounce board. It was okay. Yeah, I ended up doing the the Fist of Krampus, um, I, and I got it solely based on the name. I mean, that's. I, I was kind of confused at first because I was walking up to. We won't get into why I was late, uh, but we, <laughs> um, when I was walking up to Revolution from where I parked, I saw that you had checked in. I'm like, Krampus? What, is he drinking Old Irving? Like, do they have <laughs> Old Irving at Revolution? And then I read it. That was a very good beer, the Fist of Krampus. Yeah, it was. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad I tried it. Kind of want to get a crawler of that. It's their thing. extra holiday ale. It's very good. I it was it. extra. It was extra in a good way. But that's not why we're here. Actually, it is why we're here. But we're doing our Maltese, and so we're going to go through, you know, if you remember last year's episode, we kind of run through our favorite beers, and we uh, talk some uh, statistics of hey. the show and, and all this other good shit. But, uh, well, you guys, what, what are we drinking? Up? Well, we're drinking something now. To, 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 together what do we drink we got some beers we're going to share as well yeah. during this episode it's kind of our this is it really for the year this is our last show of the year except for at, and after the final four correct this is the last show of 2021 thank god holy <laughs> moly Oof. now i don't have to see you guys for a long time and when time. do i when's the money show up 2023 oh mm-hmm. i feel like the contract do we need to should i read the contract that you guys no on the air no? <laughs> yeah, do you have it with you? Yeah, yeah. Let me. Uh, I'll get to it later in the episode once the sure. suspense builds. I, we, it's a radio trick. You don't want to just shout everything out at the beginning. You want to keep the listeners listening. No, the best thing's going to be when you have to do your sixty-second recap of all of our top beers. Ooh, oh boy. Let's get right into it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, actually, what are you what are you drinking right now, Brandon? Uh, I'm drinking an all-day IPA. Hmm. Nice and simple after going after those other big beers we were drinking at Rev. Correct. And Clark, you and I are drinking Brickstone's Double Hazed Hazy Correct. IPA. Yep. We're drinking on my side. Oh, yeah. I'm almost done with mine, too. We're going to have to crack into a beer soon. And then I feel bad because Brandon just poured himself a full 12 ounce can there. You can deal. Well, that's He's all right. a big boy. That's all right. Well, before we get into the beers, I'm going to go through what we uh, have for our top episodes, the top countries. And then if you guys. 
I know I brought this up last minute when we were at Revolution. I have a list of like just three of my favorite episodes that we recorded this year. If you guys can think of it off the top of your heads or while I'm going through the other stuff, you've got some time right now. Here we go. We're going to go with the top episodes for 2021. And what basically that means is they were the most streamed episodes we had. Um, and I get these numbers only from SoundCloud. So this is just based on SoundCloud. What I need to do is get a little better about, uh, you know, I, I don't know if that counts for what's streaming from other places. I don't think so because SoundCloud is where we host our. Yeah. I think it has to be because I don't think everybody's going to SoundCloud. And listening no, to it. no. And if you are, thank you. Thank you, SoundCloud. So uh, here we go. The top three episodes. You guys ready? Do you guys have any idea? Did you guys check or Brandon? You I have the check. same access. That you do. I know you do, but I don't know if you actually. Check. Hey, can I? Have, can I have the same access? No. No. Uh, um, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm a nice person. No. Nobody can, has ever. Said I know. That I know how to use you. computers. Your kids have even told me that Crap. you're just okay. Damn it. Here we go. The top three episodes of <laughs> 2021. Episode. Oh, here we go. Number three on the list is. Episode 50, in our 50th episode, which is really, you can stop the drum line, is episode 50, which is with Rabid Brewing, and that was a lot of fun. Do you guys remember that one? I do. Yes. <laughs> what is hip hop's here? You're just giving the solid. Like, yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> See. I don't really, um, well, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, because I got to go back. Clark, you were, mm-hmm. he was on that episode right He yes. was actually oh. a part of all three of these, which I thought maybe two of them he wasn't. Oh, finally. Mm-hmm. I felt like the, the, the theme was all of the top <laughs> the top downloads and listens were the ones that I weren't on. No, that's... So I finally cracked the case. You, you did. And so stop telling your friends to listen to it just so you can get mentioned. <laughs> Rabbit was a lot of fun because, mainly because it took us 50 episodes to get them on the show. Correct. <laughs> because that was originally supposed to be... If anybody wants to go back and, and listen to it, uh, our probably one of our first, if not our first episode. Yeah. Uh, and we talk about it in the episode about how we were going to go, and then it just didn't work out. I was sick or something. I was you, sick. You were sick. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that works, because I'm just not feeling all that great. Yeah. I don't know if I was sick or just not feeling like taking the trip, but... Uh, you had COVID back in 2018. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Back then, I was like, oh, I've got this new... <laughs> disease but that was a lot of fun talking with them and uh i think we need to make the trip out there to 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 properly do an episode agreed with them that was that was a lot of fun and their beers were really good as well i remember drinking when it's um what did we drink from them i know we had a seltzer hard you did. seltzer yeah i had a hard seltzer which was really good i really enjoyed it it was very champagne like um i don't i don't necessarily remember like what i drank from them but i do remember i i saw this the other day i still have their bomber of their barrel aged stout that we need Ooh. to crack into we should have planned this better and we could have been drinking that while we were talking could have, could have. but we didn't uh clark do you have any highlights from that episode or are you just gonna sit there and not do anything like normal i'm gonna sit here and not do anything like usual fantastic the uh... he's listening to it real quick <laughs> yeah you're talking very fast i'm doing it at 20 times speed <laughs> that's like a pat's listening to our show uh, so epi- uh, the, the the number and i i should have wrote down no, I'm glad I didn't write down how many streams. I didn't give away how many people actually listen to the show. <laughs> uh, number two, which I thought was very surprising. And it was very close with the other one. Yeah, with the last one or the next yeah. one. Uh, yeah, this almost became... Actually, they're both pretty... All three of them are not too far away yeah. from each other. Number two ended up being episode 65, Pumpkin Beers 2021 with Rachel Morrison. Fantastic. How about that? A pumpkin beer episode. It was nice to have a, 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 a serious guest. <laughs> drinking our pumpkin beers together yeah yeah instead of it just being us and just being and i still want to go back to what i said on the christmas beer episode how we tear apart I, that's a very hard term it's I, true we do it though. we tear apart the pumpkin beers but then the christmas beers were going oh yes well i pick up the ginger and while i don't like this as much i do taste the cardamom in here we while hold- the pumpkin beers like there's not enough pumpkin in here, and there's there's too much nutmeg, and there's too much cardamom. I feel like we hold pumpkin beers to a higher standard. For like some what's? I, mean, well, just, I think pumpkin beers are just that much harder, like to nail correctly. Sure, and, yeah. and especially if you're doing pumpkin in a beer, there's an expectation of pumpkin and spice like, and everything nice. Yeah, like you, you're you're bordering on wanting you know pumpkin pie in a glass. Sure. Um, and then if it's missing one thing, or if it's too much of something, then it's like, yeah. 
I, th- I feel like the style of Christmas beers has been around probably a lot longer. And it's a bit broader. As yeah, well, as exactly. For, as, like from our last episode, the, the Christmas episode, I mean, there's there's a bunch of different types of Christmas beers that we had. And, and in fact, I was talking with Daniel. He just posted that uh, he got, was it the Peppermint Porter from Two Brothers? He got it the day after we had done the episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Two Brothers sent it to him. Uh, I was like, oh, I love that beer. I wish we would have had that for the episode. They sent it to him? Mm -hmm. Two brothers looking out for hip hops. Um, (laughs) That sounded weird. Uh, (laughs) 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 Sorry, it's that double barrel beer I had (laughs) where they were talking on (laughs) it. It happens. But but yeah, it's it's such a wider variety of beers that you could have for Christmas that isn't the same as pumpkin beers. And, And I think the three of us are looking for specific things when it comes to pumpkin beers with with christmas beers and holiday beers i mean we could have had like we could have just done a whole like a whole bunch of barrel aged beers for christmas beers because by the time they come out around yeah. here it's like thanksgiving and, and christmas well what i'd love to do is have daniel and pat back on for next year's pumpkin episode to Absolutely. see how both of their responses differ from their responses to christmas beers i like that idea and i think we'll just keep building yeah. uh pumpkin maybe we'll just build the pumpkin beer episode up a little bit more until brandon <clears throat> your wife is like you guys need to stop recording at the house <laughs> <laughs> i think that works we finally move into our studio yeah hear that short fuse okay. we're coming Get that do you have any ready. updates on that uh i know i wasn't there for the last short fuse right episode. on top of that rose <laughs> did he show uh, you the updates on the yeah no we we saw the the we saw the blueprints and that's about okay. it so far oh, so i it's think still... i think they bought some nails Oh, that's screws. good. I mean, nails are hard to come by these days with the supply chain issues. Absolutely. So that's uh, um, promising. Please stop talking. Oh, sorry. Sure. <laughs> so the number one episode that was streamed this year for the Malting Hour. And this is shocking to me. Very shocking to me. Uh, and it's awesome, yeah. actually. Yeah. Is episode, <laughs> episode uh, number 48, Return to Lake Effect with Clint. Which is awesome, uh, because we got to talk to, it was almost, I listened to a little bit of it today, it was almost a year from when we first had Clint on, which was almost a year to the day that everything was shut down because of the pandemic, so it was nice to have Clint back on, and we had a lot of fun talking with him. I don't remember, excuse me, I don't remember exactly what we drank, but I think you and I had some random... Like well, I recall, beers. and this one was over Zoom too, because I, it yeah, was. I almost we forget that, ones, right? almost the first half of this year was over zoom yeah which is kind of interesting to think about because i feel like we've been doing this in person for a while now but uh no the one i drank was i can't remember if it was lake superior oh it was or really something though, right? i picked up at uh capone's the, uh like yeah. barley wine bar, barrel aged barley wine yeah, wasn't it aged a little bit it was i mean yeah. it was a couple years old yeah it sounded like it had been there for a while and it was pretty tasty. i just remember i remember specifically you saying that clint's like really yeah. like, oh yeah. he still has that <laughs> well, I, right. I think he even said i'm gonna go buy some back because i want to have some of those yeah, yeah. And i think and, and with that we kind of went on a little bit of a talk about capones about how they have like a bunch mm-hmm. of aged beers sitting there which is kind of nice Something yeah I, I, i'm happy that that was the number one <clears throat> episode uh streamed this year for us so thank you everyone for listening to that especially since it's a brewery that we've yeah. frequented yeah we we so since frequent you guys are in the know is there any timetable on when their new tap room is supposed to, now that they finally, as far as I know, know actually um, will own it. I, I, I don't know specifically, but I do know, like, um, I think it was like a week or two ago, um, Clint had posted, um, I think it was on his personal page, or maybe it was on both, but it was the blueprints that, like, they're they're doing some final finalization on their blueprints before Ooh. they go into, Fun. like, the build-out. Because I know, I think his wife is the architect on that, so... Because Clint, in his former life, was an architect. Right, um, right, right. And I, I think that's kind of how he met his wife. I, I don't know. I'm, 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 so. I'm just... But, it, you know, they're in the same field. Um, and, yeah, so he brought her on to help, you know, with... I probably lead the whole, like, kind of, you know building plans so well that's um, one thing i'm definitely very cool. looking forward to whenever yeah. it does open and that was one part of the the conversation that we had was you know update on the tap room and from what i remember and what we've talked about with him the plan is sometime late next year in 2022 to have it open and of course 
when that happens, we are going to uh, try our damnedest to get an interview with him uh, about it. Yeah. So. A little first look. Yeah, that'd be nice. Ooh, a little preview. So, that'll be fun. So there it is, everybody. That's the top three episodes of 2021 from the Malting Hour. We got episode 50, Rabid Brewing. Episode 65, Pumpkin Beers 2021 with Rachel Morrison. And episode 48, Return to Lake Effect with Clint Botts. Hey, guys. I'm going to open up a beer. Uh, it's a beer that... Um, we were going to do an after the final four of, but time had kept slipping away from us because we kept getting other beers. This is the first year we've actually had issues like that. We had at at this moment of recording this episode, we actually have a stockpile of of episodes. That is, this is all kind of nice. no. Everything comes out a day after we record. Tony used to be, not anymore. Kind of like it because sometimes I, it was a day of. <laughs> yeah, that's happened. That has happened. True. Uh, a couple of Sunday night uh, things like this. Uh, I'm gonna pour this here. This beer I got from my neighbors, uh, neighbors relatives. It is Atco Brewing Company's Imperial IPA Cherry Berry Cobbler, which is an India Pale Ale brewed with blackberry, cherry, vanilla, lactose, and spices. You guys can. I don't know how much. I don't know how much these these new glasses that we got from Revolution. These barrel glasses um so this beer is uh not old it's from the summer though (laughs) so i don't know how how well it's held up i do remember that when i had it i was uh surprised that this was a nine percent beer it smells uh hoppy it smells like uh, you got some got some floaters in here oh yeah you yours is definitely we probably should have rolled i have some floaters too i do not uh, no, nope, I take that back. There is something floating on. Hmm. It, it's okay. very, actually, it, it's pie crust. There's a little, <laughs> there is a, a bit of difference from when I first had it, but it does, well, what do you guys think about it? How's that? Uh, I, knowing it's a bit older than we probably normally would drink something along this, uh, style. beer style. Uh, it's actually not bad and for being a milkshake i mean you know how much we talk about milkshakes not being our favorite but uh with that lactose in there it's pretty smooth pretty nice not too sweet yeah and i and i would not have suspected it to be a nine percent beer yeah not at all it didn't drink like a nine percent beer when i first had it i don't know if you guys are looking at my glass now <clears throat> there's a lot of sediment i just poured in there shouldn't have done it so but, you said cherry cobbler right it's mm-hmm. reminiscent of a cherry cobbler uh, the actual ingredients in it are blackberry, cherry, vanilla, lactose, and, and spice. yeah, blackberry, cherry puree, vanilla beans, spices, and lactose. Oh, I'm getting this is I'm getting some cherry. I'm definitely getting cherry. I almost get like cherry skin. Yeah, kind of like a nut skin. Uh, we're gonna move on from that. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, the, it, it, the fruitiness of it is nice, and it you know when a, an IPA ages and you get kind of a I don't know just a neutral bitterness. I kind of got that on the aroma from when we first opened it up, but I don't get that in the actual beer. It's sweet. Like yeah. the lactose, I think, is what's kind of saving this beer as being aged. When I had it fresh, it was really good, and apparently they have a whole cobbler series, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I do. I, and you've got a. I've left a, a sour beer here. I thought about maybe us drinking that. It's Pog or something Pog, whatever. It's one of the yeah. ones I left here for an after the final I pour. Used to play Pog. What's that? I used to play Pog. Mm-hmm. Remember Pog? Yeah, I used to play Pog a lot, too. Okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Carry on. <sighs> Don't I'm, you love having me here? I'm like, glad this is your last quite episode a role. ever. Yeah, this is Spoiler alert. alert. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Clark's not getting that paycheck in 2023. <laughs> oh, shoot. That's why I said 2023. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, overall, though, I mean, this is... This was a... Uh, so, so Jeff, as everybody knows, my, my neighbor Jeff... Um, he had some family come in. His wife had some family uh, come in, and one of the, whoever it was, I forget, like a cousin or whatever, the son actually is the brewer at Atco Brewing or works at Atco Brewing. So okay. I got to try a bunch of the a Pilsner that was really good, uh, a hazy IPA, which I was going to save for us, but I didn't. I drank it myself. <clears throat> it was really good. Sorry, guys. Um, but the sour that I have as well, we'll get to at some point. Uh, that I think will be okay with yeah. aging, and it's been cold. Both of these have been cold since I got them, so... It was nice. So Echo Brewing, keep it up. Very good. Might see if I can try and get something else uh, from you guys next year. So uh, moving on, why don't we talk about 
some beers some beers our yeah. top <laughs> beers number let's go let's go do you guys want to do, go through honorable mentions first or should we yeah just talk I, about... I think um at, at least i have a couple honorable mentions mm-hmm. i just want to quickly go through so i don't know if you you all have yeah, those as no, well all right so honorable mentions i've got one from an episode uh back in i believe may out in short fuse that we recorded pretty early not not too early in the morning but That's around 10 ish 10 a.m yeah. i had uh their Sunday morning stacks, which I believe... Yeah, you went hard that morning. <laughs> <laughs> ...was a uh, wheat wine that... Uh, with this wheat wine, we tried to replicate the flavors of a fresh stack of pancakes on a beautiful Sunday morning. 11.5%. I was drinking that at roughly 10 a.m. Yeah. Fantastic. I really liked that one. That's a good uh, Super shout out to <laughs> Old Irving. Which I previewed my 2022 Maltese on uh, the Christmas beer episode, I believe. Uh, 2022 with Beezer already with Beezer. Oh yeah, that's right. Triple Beezer this year <laughs> was a favorite of mine. Everyone knows Beezer is really good, and I believe from an after the final pour early this year, Goose Islands. If you're a bird, oh, the stout with the strawberries. I thought it was I'm a bird. Whichever one we had, it's if you're a bird, I'm a bird. Yeah, but which one did we have? I'm a bird. I'm a bird? Yes. That's the Goose Island one of it. <laughs> Let's check that. I'm working on it. Well, yes, you're right. I'm a bird. Yeah, my, I, my apologies to Goose I Island. I know because it's on one of my lists. Yep. <clears throat> oh, boy. It's funny because how that ended up on your honorable mentions. Now I'm really interested in your top beers because when we had that, that beer. On your top beer well, list? Well, we, we talked about it on the episode, how it was one of our top beers. Yeah. But we thought that like this is a contender for the Maltese mm-hmm. for sure. Um, so, all right, good honorable mentions. Uh, honorable mentions. Brandon, do you have any honorable mentions, or did you just stick to your... No, regular? no, I, I do have a couple honorable mentions. One of them is actually from uh, Lake Effect. Ooh. So it's the, the Lake Effect barrel-aged um, collab they did with Percolator, the, the Madeira barrel. Oh, that's right. The wine uh, barrel-aged. Yeah, the what like, because I had it twice. I think it did. I don't know if I drank it on the episode, but I had it one time and then I had it again. And it was like it developed so well in that bottle. Um, the flavors just kind of it, it just became so much more prominent. And it became like the, the barrel, you know, it wasn't too acidic, it wasn't too like dry. Like it was very like it was an easy drinking and delicious, flavorful stout. And I was, um, I was hesitant at first. I think I talked about this too because, you know, like you know, red, you know, well, Madeira is a type of wine. I guess, um, I guess it is. Um, <laughs> and um, that was him actually confirming that it yeah. is. So yeah, I, I, I was I was pleasantly surprised in how much I ended up enjoying it. Like even after having one bottle, and then how much it was different when I had it like two months later, three months later, it was that good. So yeah, kudos to them for that. Good choice. Um, I do have some. Other honorable, honorable mentions that I'm like, do they go into my full list or do they go into something else? Sorry, I just had to yell at Clark to rinse my glass because he's running away. Um, <laughs> I think you just go with your, oh, so you you were saying you it was t- it, it's tough for you to decide if it's on your top list yeah. or on your honorable mentions. It, yeah. was, t- it was tough for me to, to do these. There is one that I feel like if I had to do, uh, it, was, it was tough to... to move it to my honorable mention because it really was one of my favorite beers it just got beat out a little bit but yeah. uh yeah just go through what you know i it's you know it's not not the end of the world here what we're choosing this is an end all be all but um a beer that i was surprised that i really enjoyed uh beer for pizza by off color which one is the regular one or the, yep, the regular one yeah good call good call uh, that was a really good beer definitely <laughs> deserves an honorable mention because and it, that set the standard to me for a cola beer and we talked about uh, on our the first uh, portion of our episode for uh, Build Your Own Media Pack. Um, Goose did a really good job with the. I feel like with the cola. Yeah. Um, so this, but, but that beer for pizza was. Yeah. So that's kind of like that's that was my standard of like going into it, and I was pleasantly surprised how a barrel aged version of that turned out. Like, and it's not. I, I can't say a version of that, but a barrel aged version of a. Uh, a cola beer. Yeah. I think we should uh, next year 
focus on a beer four type episode we'll see what they end up releasing and you know ones that age well or you know won't be like so we'll crazy, finally but... do a food and beer right? absolutely that actually okay there we go we're done yeah we got it <laughs> see you yeah. guys next year <laughs> Bye. uh no good good choice you got more any any more honor mentions nope all right well i mean because i had to keep going on that's fine. I've got. Uh, I'm gonna run through these fast because I actually have uh, five honorable mentions. Oh my mm, goodness! Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'll start from uh, start from the bottom. Now we're here. Start from the bottom to the top. Uh, Brickstones Milkshake IPA Blueberry and Promagant. 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 <laughs> Words. Kind of like the smos. <laughs> Ooh, don't drink a 17 percent beer before doing an episode. That was. One of the first milkshake IPAs that I absolutely loved, and we were texting during that episode on the side while we were talking to Tommy about That's right, how still much, on Zoom. Yeah, back then. yeah. yeah wh- how much we loved it. Uh, so that definitely made it. I, I really do like that beer. Yeah, maybe one of the first milkshake IPAs I've actually truly enjoyed. And I bought it again after we did that episode, but I haven't had any of the other ones since. So I need to to, to step up that. And they just came year. out with a new one fairly recently. Yeah, and I think we talked about it with Tommy. Yeah, we did talk about it with Tommy. That's I right. don't remember what the, the flavors were, but I know it sounded very good. Uh, next was one that I had on Halloween, not with you guys, was Central Waters Brewers Reserve Bourbon Pecan Kringle Stout. Ooh. That, if you guys don't know what a Kringle is, it's basically like a coffee cake so to speak and it's like pecan sweetness and central waters you know uh they do a lot of really interesting barrel age stuff there's stuff that i like and stuff that i don't like this probably was one of my favorite barrel age beers from them so i was very happy about that the next one was the one that i wanted to put on my top five list uh because those guys were awesome and this was also one of just my favorite beers of the year just kind of got beat out by what my favorite beers are is Rheingeist Truth IPA. Ooh. That beer to me is just, I, I bought it a lot last year. I think I text you guys every time I bought it and maybe I posted about it as well. Yeah. Uh, it's just a solid IPA. Brandon had said off color beer for pizza. I've got off colors beer for burgers because that one was awesome. And we talked about it on another episode where I second guessed myself on what it was, but it is a. Shit, now I don't remember. Uh, it's a barrel aged yeah, yep. lager. It is a, it's a blended beer of a lager and a barrel aged beer, if I'm not mistaken, which I might be. Yeah, inspired by the classic fizzy lager and shot specials enjoyed at Corner Bars Everywhere, a base Hell's Box starts out quite yeah, yeah, plain to Box. maximize contributions from its time in bourbon barrels. Yeah, so that's two off color beers that made our honorable mention list. That, yeah. that, was, that was awesome. That I was that probably. One. So last year and maybe we'll get into this a little bit later but uh new year's resolutions yes. for beer and i remembered that as i was one of this my one for last year was to drink more breweries specifically off color which i did earlier in the year and you bought a whole mix thing i did them. which was fantastic because yeah. you get to try it was 15 different beers that they do all in one pack for a pretty damn good price uh just after i had covid so my taste was still a little off so I need to do it again. Yeah, baby. but this one probably was my favorite I had from Off Color. Beer oh, for nice. Burgers. Yeah, Beer for Burgers was awesome. And then my 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 final honorable mention, which also did come very close to being on my final list, was Brandon. You and I drank this together. Revolution, well via Zoom. Uh, Revolution Brewing's Freedom of Expression Orange and Cranberry, which is okay. I you just bought some more today, I did. which. I mean, I know you bought it for your house or anything, but, you know, if we want to crack one open later, that's not too bad. It is, honestly, like, all the Freedom beers, the Sour Session beers have always, I've, all the ones that I've had, I've thoroughly enjoyed. They are, like, thirst quenching. There's a nice tartness to it that's not too sour. This one blew ne- me away. Next, next to their, their, their Deep Woods series, it would go Deep Woods, Freedom, and then their Hero series for me. Ooh. And I love IPAs. Yeah. But the Barrel Age stuff is amazing. These session sours are equally as amazing to me. I don't. I'm not a big sour guy. Like I like sour beers, but I don't love them. I don't seek them out. I'm not always like trying to like buy them. I'll buy stouts over sours or IPAs over sours, pale ales over sours. Yeah, there's a market for sours. Yeah, and we're freedom, not in it. But the free, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the Freedom series uh, from Revolution is just awesome. So that one, uh, the Freedom Expression Orange and Cranberry was uh, my top runner up. Uh, Brandon, where we are on time right now. 30 minutes. I knew it. This is going to be a long show. We got to take a break, baby. We'll be right back. Okay. Let me see. Oh, what the fuck did 
is it. of a routine no. only thing rich is the overteen and ain't Wait. nobody messing with my whole team Bang. stop a bitch's eye like i'm oh. overeem uh -huh. look i'm over it and now i'm oh. overseas oh. smoking on hydro oh. coated oh. submarine okay. Okay. check out my resume it's oh. on it if i had money they all rounds on me all but i'm not there me. yet nah. Bi weekly cash in my check. Big bro shit be a pain in my neck. Bank road dance, taking half of my net. But I'ma make do shit, that is a bet. Fuck money in these bitches, you know I'm ambitious. I'm going on a mission and love is my ammunition. First up is the recognition, there's something that's deadly missing. But it's forgiven, I'm the gift that keeps on giving. I'm bringing the defense and you in the deep end. We coming equipped and you in the prevent. Trying to say decent, but smelling like shit. Now back to the grindstone, if I ever seen it. We taking a long road, damn. Let's make it scenic We never out of gas No need for convenience Ain't waiting for nothing Don't need your convenience Hell Pants was sagging, I was sitting back a paddy wagon. I was petty jacking, pockets man was heavy lacking. Now I'm steady stacking, ready for any action. Now I titties out, like she Janet Jackson. Call me Timberlake, or Mr. Piggy Bank, or Mr. I don't really give a fuck to be frank. I'm ducking the ops, I'm ducking the cops, I'm making that guap. I'm cutting that soft, I'm making it hop, I'm looking for top. We on the path, and the viewers seen it. This ain't a joke, man, I ain't joking, Phoenix. And even if you laughing, I'ma get the last My pants still sagging just so you can kiss my ass Can we, can we pause yeah. this for one, just, is this on? Just for <laughs> one second, sir West Coast West Coast East And we're back hmm. I'm gonna, I'm interested to see Cause you got a new mic, you're trying a new mic this It time. didn't even peak I know, I'm, I'm excited to hear how that sounds <laughs> Mine can peak Shut up. Uh, <laughs> uh, hope you guys enjoyed that song. Don't know what it was. Thanks. It was probably very good. Uh, real quick, before we get into what we're drinking, I didn't go through the top countries this year, and it's different than last year. <gasps> slightly, slightly, slightly. Dun, Coming in dun, dun. at number three, India. Did you, guys see, did you guys see that, Kevin? I assumed. I mean, I know, you know, with... Uh, isp things and blockers and, and and you know stuff comes through from different places it may not actually be in india but you know that's where it's from number two though belgium mm. ireland did not make they it like beer there they do and number one usa all day baby that was it just wanted to get through those real quick that's and that's not shocking no that's by, not shocking, by any means if it was any place else i'd be like we need to move <laughs> <laughs> uh clark We're going to germany <laughs> we could clark uh that is one of our goals for one yes. year is to we know what we should plan that for 2023 brandon Ooh, we need to make that october fest when i yeah. finally get paid we're headed on a trip uh about that um uh, clark what are we drinking right now as we get into as we're about to get into our top five beers of the year we're drinking something i've been holding on to for a while from my work neighbor temperance beer company in evanston this is called the First Five, their five-year anniversary special, which is a Belgian-style quad aged for a year in whiskey, rum, and port barrels, and added bright black currants before bottling. And this is from 2018, correct? So the bottle <laughs> so. says 2018, but I checked it in at the tap room in 2019. Hmm. So I could have sworn that this, they released this in 2019, but when did I, you win in 2019? Well, when did August. you? When did oh. you? When did you fire me? Oh, that's a good point. 2016. 2016. So they opened. Uh, no, I remember sitting out on their uh, nice patio they have out there at Temperance drinking this. It, it could have. It could have been around for a while, and I just never had it. But it's weird that it was untapped, and I drank it. Either way, it's from Temperance. It was on beer. Way. What? Um, I will say this. Smell wise, I didn't like it at first. No, it was it, it was kind of off putting. I wouldn't say off putting. Um, For me, it was. It smelled like I was smelling old jelly. Well, which reminds me a little bit of that, jelly, that jam beer I brought back from Eagle, <laughs> yes. Park, Eagle Park yeah. in 
<laughs> the PB and J. Yeah. Oh, the fucking jam right there, man. Yeah, awesome. I, you know what? That didn't honorable make... mention to that. I guess. Yeah, yeah honorable I'm mention. To that. Yeah, that's on everybody's honorable mention because that should have been <clears throat> on there for sure. Well, we didn't talk about the one that's on everybody's honorable mention that we had for the show was the King Henry. Well, that's, that's right. Well, well that, that, that separate category. That yeah. actually. Well, well, we'll talk about that in a second. <laughs> 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 We're talking about this beer. Yeah, well, no, this is a this is a large bomber worth of beer, so it's, the, it's worth sharing. The taste of it, though, is really good. Um, there is that tartness um, and fruitiness that you expect from you know a quad with black currants in it. There's like a, but there's also like a jammy, which I think comes from the port barrel. Like it's it almost reminds me of a toned down mixed berry ryeway. So the and the yeah, reason I had to Revolution. so when Clark first poured this, I. Took a sniff and a sip. I was like, "What is?" Um, you know what? That's was, that's your new segment on the yeah. show. It's Brandon <laughs> sniffing a sip. So took a sniff and a sip, and it was. Um, I love that. I couldn't discern what style it was, so I asked Clark, and he said it was a quad. Because to me, this is I get quad, but it's also bordering on barley wine for me. I was going to say the same thing, except there is that like little bit of. Banana. Yep, that's uh, what. Back that there. was my that was my discerning factor. It was like I'm getting that key note that I love in a. This is actually a very good beer for yeah. being aged as long as it has. I would I I would have liked to have tried it uh, fresh, but Clark, do you have any more bottles of this? Or this is it. This has been it, and it's been sitting in my cabinet for I a very long think time. I remember you bringing this up one time, us hanging out, maybe drinking Probably. it. But yeah. no, this is this is. Is there more left in that bottle? There is. Tiny bit. Mm, maybe, mind a little bit we'll more. Taste it, taste it. Yeah, I'll be honest. Uh, before we do that, um, you guys, it's time to get to it. It's our top five beers of 2021. And now, just so everybody knows, these aren't necessarily beers that we've had on the show. They may be beers we've had on the show. They're just, we went through our memory, our untapped check-ins, and just kind of, it, it was tough. I will say for me, and I, I text you guys this morning, it was tough for me to kind of, narrow it down and i thought i had a list and then i went through it again this morning and i was like oh, I, I had to switch some things out and i'm not surprised but i feel like i've really just pigeonholed myself into uh, a certain style until i get to my number one beer okay tony well what you got what's number five all right well i was about to go ahead and take so a walk did you over rank your, no, i did rank your I, okay. I did rank them i did rank them and these are my top we ones. want to hear it and i and i think Clark, specifically, you'll be surprised when number five is. I think you would have thought it probably would have been higher. Because I did have this last year. My number five beer of 2021 was Revolution's Brewing, <laughs> Revolution Brewing's Death by Cherries. Ooh. So one I, of your favorite beers from this year. Huh? Y- yes. I do though, remember you it, had it, what was it, in the summer? No, I had, uh, I looked at it. I had it in, it was late. It was late in, the, in our, or like, early spring or maybe yeah i don't remember but we and then we had one recently that's that, right that's right that's one of the that was my favorite one of my favorite beers of the Deepwood series of last year but having it this year I, I wasn't i wasn't counting it out as far as like all the beers that i had this year yeah number five that was there and i will say this rheingeist truth ipa was right there with it but death by cherries having it Twice this year and having Truth IPA like five times this year. Uh, Barely Age just kind of beat it out. Truth IPA is delicious from Ryan Guys, but Death by Cherries, which is their Barrel Age stout with actual tart cherries, I thought was a really nice mix of the Barrel Age beer and that nice like hint of tart cherries. I remember you liking that one from the start even. Yeah, that that was... The first one you even had, you said, this is fantastic. Yeah, I, I fell in love with that beer right away. And you were gracious enough to, to share another one with me. I was. Uh, two months ago. Yeah. So, so uh, Brandon, I'm going to throw it to you because I'm going to walk over by Clark and get, get some more of this <laughs> temperance beer. Um, so I will actually go ahead. And I, I didn't necessarily rank mine in any order. It's kind of open-ended. But um, one that I, the first one that I will mention um, is one that we had back in September. Uh, it's Pear 21 from New Glarus Brewing. Ooh, I, good call. I was blown away by that beer because it literally was like pear juice. And Tony, uh, we had that together. Dude, like, just a side note. Uh, I was at Jeff's house two weekends ago uh, for a birthday p- The goddamn heat. For, for a, a birthday launch. party. <laughs> what would you say? For a rocket launch. You were at Jeff's house. <laughs> I was there for a rocket. For a birthday party. <laughs> 
Uh, and I brought some back for. Oh, hold on. What is it? Um, um, sorry, I got a text message and I got distracted by it, and I should never look at a text message while we're recording. I was at Jeff's house to for a birthday party, and he went to his fridge to offer me a beer and grabbed the pair twenty one. That I specifically bought back, brought back for his daughter, which is why we went to Woodman's for that. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, dude, I gave this to her. I can't drink this as much as I wanted to because it was so good. And if anybody wants to go back and listen to that camping episode, I think we did. Yeah, we, we drank it during that one. Yep. All the beers are starting to kick in right now, guys. Sorry. <laughs> it was really, really good. That's a good call, man. I didn't even think about throwing that on there. I, I kind of cut out. I don't know why, but I cut out like the camping uh uh episode from the beers that were eligible and i don't know why two of my beers are from that episode i think i know which the other one is which i saw it and i was like well it was a camping episode i can't throw it on there i don't know why but all those (laughs) beers that we had that weekend were so good not to switch switch gears and go back a little bit but back to death by cherries Mm -hmm. my first check-in of that beer which was november of last year which we all discussed Mm. even though you had it this year many times my comment was, really enjoy this, but not as hot and bothered by it like Tony is. I remember that, yeah. So we know you're telling the truth. If yeah. We, over a year ago, that was my comment. What What was, actually, real quick, because you can you can not probably bring it up. I think I like lost my mind over it as much as I did let's some of the see, other let's beers. Let's see, Tony. Oh, back. as much as I lost my mind probably about the old stock, uh, 20... Yeah, I mean, you gave it a five from the start back last November, and you said, I don't like fruited stouts. This has changed my mind. Mm -hmm. Barrel, vanilla, caramel, roasty, and boom, cherry. Jeez, this really, really good. So, grammar and spelling, but... Shut up. Because you said, shut up. Jeez, this really, really good. Yeah, well, I'll go back and edit it. It's fine. (laughs) But uh, back to what Brandon was saying, that Pair 21 is very good. Clark, you have not had that, right? Never have. Would love to. Uh, Clark, have you had many new Glarus beers? I feel like we don't talk about it. I've had a couple. um, I feel like the episodes you guys have drank them, I haven't really ever been a part of just because uh, maybe I wasn't invited or I couldn't make it most no, likely. Fine. It but, doesn't matter either uh, way. You weren't no, there. Who um, cares? Who cares? I am headed up to the Dells in the middle of January for a hockey tournament. So Nobody if there's cares, anything we maybe. need. Well, I care. Actually, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it sounds like a good start to 2022. I mean, what else am I going to do with a minivan with I'll, two kids and a hockey bag? I'll tell you this. my new One of my New Year's resolutions, <laughs> I'm going to throw it in there, mm-hmm. Is that we have a full episode with the three of us, maybe even throwing in somebody else. By the way, Daniel Hipops is joining the show. Uh, maybe all of us can sit around and, you know, do another new Glarus episode. Because Brandon, you and I have done a new Glarus episode, which was a lot of fun. Uh, we tried a bunch of beers, but they have so much to offer. And Clark, knowing that you haven't tried so many of their beers, sounds, uh, yeah. maybe we should do that. I'm in. All right. So, um, Pair 21. Sorry, did you have anything else to say yep. about that? Clark, you're up next. Number, number five four. for me. No, number four. And or do you have six beers? I haven't said my, my yeah, first one. Yeah, you didn't say it's fine. Oh, sorry, guys. Jeez. I'm drinking all these. I'm, I'm still part of the show I for keep now. He's a part of the show. I'll keep it quick. This is also a revolution beer. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Which I don't want to say I'm surprised about, but regular old 2021 Death Star. Ooh. Death Star. I, when they came out with this, I couldn't have enough of it. I think... Within the first two weeks of them releasing it, I had two 12-ounce cans. I had one the first night at a hotel Only in my two? son's yeah. house. Oh, yeah, in, in a red solo cup. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, no, it was just a very small plastic oh, clear right, hotel yeah. cup. Yeah, And you said that was determination or something. <laughs> I was like, I have to drink it. I picked it up today. I got to drink it. I don't yeah. care where I am, but I'm drinking it. <laughs> I also picked up some of the stovepipes. Now I regret not getting a stovepipe today at Revolution. I had a stovepipe that Sunday. I had another stovepipe a couple days after that, and I'm pretty sure I had another 12 ounce can within that same 10 day period, and I couldn't get enough of it. I, it was just exactly what I wanted a barrel aged stout to be, and I'm talking myself into drinking one tonight. What time should I come by? Uh, 9:30. Sounds good. <laughs> I actually that is. Uh... Yeah, it's it's one of the best barrel aged beers in Chicago. I've always enjoyed it. I I think it was just uh, I haven't said balance in a while, but here comes balance. It was the perfect balance between the barrel and the chocolatey, roasty, and I even want to say nuttiness this year. Of it's a bit that. nutty. I feel like Clark said that just so you can do that. Brandon, did you get any regular Death Star this year? This year, no. Hmm. Nope. Loser. 
Super solid. My favorite Death Star. <laughs> my fight wallet. Far. My wallet thanks me. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay. Actually, yeah, I'm surprised. After the amount of money I spent on bourbon. I was going to say, year. like the other stuff that you have gotten. I do appreciate that you did not go overboard with uh, Revolution as well. I do have a whole bunch in my fridge to, to share with oh, you. Oh, don't worry. I went way overboard. I do want a regular Death Star now, so I think I have to get that uh, soon. Yeah, I did. It's funny because I did think about it. When I was, we were checking out today at Rev, I saw the, they had the, the cans on there. I was like, mm, should I? I mean, price-wise, it was... Good price, dude. The twenty for twenty five bucks for the four pack is you. Tony, you actually yeah. checked it in twice this year. You give it five stars. Yeah, and, I, I don't think I even gave it five. Stars, no, I, so. I, I also think it's a nostalgia thing for barrel aged beers. Like to me, that's the start of barrel aged beer season here in Chicago. Like I remember when I had it, it was a Halloween party, the day before Halloween. I happened to go into a Binnie's because I had to grab some beer, or whatever, and or actually I grabbed hard seltzers, um, and I walked. I didn't even take any time to walk by the beer stuff, but out of the corner of my eye, I saw the stovepipe can, and I was like, "What? Well, I have to get it!" Like they're doing it this year, and I really want to. Fancy. Had to get it, and it was. Uh, we drank it. Uh, I shared it between uh, Mike and Paul, and uh, it was really good. And yeah, Death Star is is amazing, and it's kind. I kind of put it there. Why I don't put like Bourbon County. Or Death Star, or like just standard barrel aged beers, mainly in my top five list. For one, well, it's only been two years now, but it's because I hold them to such a higher regard. But like sure. those, those, those would easily take. That's a separate tier when you're. For me, yeah. yeah. It would just take over my, my top five. Now, I'm not saying there's not barrel aged beers in my you know top five, as you've already heard. But if I included those, that just would have you know taken it over. Speaking of your top five. What's your top four? What comes before five? What's your four? <laughs> you guys want me to jump to number three since I was ready to jump around before? <laughs> All right, number four. Uh, speaking of barrel aged beers, <laughs> number four is Brandon. You and I drank this together. It was the first time you and I in 2021 got to come back to here to the Our Studios. It was Goose Islands Barrel Age Shamrock Stout. It was like drinking liquid. Thin mints or a shamrock shake from McDonald's with roastiness. I, man, it was so close to being number. I know it's all the way down at number four, but I have explanations of the other three. Uh, <laughs> no, can, can, I, can I ask you a question? Yeah, yeah. So, how does it compare to the? Um, and I know we have an episode about this coming up. The Hot Butcher Frango Mint, without giving away too much for all the listeners, it just blows everything away. <laughs> this is exactly okay what, yeah that's all this is say. exactly yeah. what, what you want yeah. yeah okay yeah i mean and and the hot butcher one is polarizing for people who have checked it in you know whatever we have our own thoughts about it uh but this was like this hit everything it did taste it, it was like a barrel aged shamrock shake that also reminded me of a thin mint girl scout cookie it was so good. And it was so much fun that Brandon and I finally got a chance to get together. I think that was the first time we did it in was. person. Yeah, That's right. First time we did it in person since the pandemic hit. And happened. we 100% did not intend to record that. No. We, but we both had it and we're like, oh, oh we need to talk we about need to this. Talk about we need to record this. it. Yeah. The, the plan was I was coming by, we were going to drink it. And as we took our first sips, we're like, we can't not record this. Yes. So, yeah, that was that's my number four of the year. Where our dedication so lies. Fantastic. Brandon? What's your number four, baby? Um, oh, so here we go. So like I said, I did not put mine in any order. I'm just kind of going off my list. Um, and in order to keep the show moving along, that Shamrock Shake was on oh, my oh, list. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, we don't want to make for this all a two-hour show. For all the sa- <laughs> but, but it, really, for all the same reasons. And I, I am praying that they do that again. Because I will buy more than one can. Absolutely. Well, <laughs> and I think all three of us should just go and... Get some crawlers and also just drink it while we're there. Because I, I, I do remember, I don't know when it was. It might have been June, July, August. They released a couple more crawlers of that. And I was so <gasps> close to doing it. And I'm going, oh, man, I don't need, what's a crawler size? 20, 32 ounces. 32, 32, 32. 32. Yeah, okay. Uh, I don't need that for, it was expensive. But you do need that. Next, you do I mean, the second that pops up on yeah. whatever app or whatever we need to buy through in 2022, <laughs> I'm going to do that. We're doing it. The other money you spend on anything is just 
Yeah, it's, exactly. It pales in compared to what yeah. you need to spend. Because all, all of Rev's re- releases in Goose Islands will be six months after that, so I can spend all that money then. You know, okay. it doesn't all add up together, does it? No, well, maybe. Great. What's your number four? Number four. <laughs> number four has been are we, mentioned. Are we, are we over forty-five minutes at this point? Forty-eight. Oh, number four has been mentioned a number of times Ooh. tonight by an Ohio brewery. Oh shit. Ryan Guy's Truth. Yeah, I'm glad somebody put it in their top list. I I, I had to. I yeah. mean, that I I think I've said this on the show before. I mean, uh, my favorite beer in the world that I can't even think the word. <laughs> Uh, I know what it is. It is Gate Crasher from. Well, well I, actually, that's a whole other show because I need to question that beer now after buying a six pack of that. But really? Anti Hero. Oh, that yeah, is go. my beer. I, if anyone ever said you're going to go on an island and you have to pick one beer, I would choose Anti Hero. My number one beer, by the way, is that beer I would choose, by the way. It's not what you're saying, but my number one beer okay. is what I would have to choose to be on an island. That, that's fine. With. I, I would choose Anti Hero. But I'm if not they were out of Anti Hero at the island store, like right when you walk up to the island, <laughs> hi. And they're welcome like, to the island. You have one beer to yeah. choose from. We're leaving. I'm like, I want antihero. And they say, Oh, so sorry, Frank Wachowski oh, oh, so sorry. took the last six pack. God damn, he's Frank. on Island Four. We only have this left. I'd say, Okay, Ryan Geist Truth. I'm going to Island Four, and I'm pillaging. Guess so. And what I like about Ryan Geist uh, Truth is it's a tiny bit less bitter than antihero. Yeah, but it's still got everything you want in an IPA. Absolutely. And I would totally go for that any day of the week. So, number four for me. What if it was a Wednesday? Definitely. Tuesday, 2 p.m. I'd drink two of them. Sunday at three. Three. <laughs> hmm, I like your style. Yeah. All right. We're on to our number threes. Number three. Uh, real quick before we do that, Brandon, I know you poured yourself some cider. But my glass is empty. What are we drinking? What are we, what, what, anything else? My glass is not empty. Oh. I have an idea. Oh, okay. Brandon's got an idea. While Brandon does that, I'm going to go to my number three, which originally was going to be my number one. And I came back and I realized what my number one was actually going to be. But my uh, number three beer for this year is something I think I drank last year. (laughs) Again? Are you making this up on the spot? Oh, shit. Oh, man. Oh, man. Brandon just cracked open. The freedom of expression, orange cranberry. Well, since I've never oh. had this, I gotta quickly. <laughs> That's exciting. Um, <laughs> my number three beer of 2021 is Revolution Brewing's Apple Brandy Rye Wave. I put it up so high because I thought I was gonna not like this beer, and I almost like it more than Death by Cherries. Ooh. Brandon, you and I ended up doing a after the final pour, which I don't know if we ever released. You and I recorded it, and uh, we were pretty. It was a Zoom. It was a yeah. Zoom uh, a one. But you and I were pretty like done for the the evening. We decided to do. Oh, let's do this. And uh, you know, I'm gonna dig. I'm gonna dig through our uh, cloud <laughs> and see if I can find it. But yeah, Apple Brandy Ryeway was really good. I don't like brandy, and again, I don't really like fruited things unless they're sour. But Apple Brandy Ryeway was really, really good. So that's my number three beer of twenty. Yeah, another five star for you on. Uh, yeah, baby. Untapped. I only pretty much go with my five star beer. I remember. So when did I drink this? I okay, it was back in the early February. Again, as I mentioned earlier, a little bit of COVID in me, so my taste and smell was still not quite back to where it was. Um, and I, I liked it. I gave it four and a quarter stars. Uh, I, I think I wish I could drink that again now. Brandon, did you ever try it? Which one? Apple brand. Oh, yeah, we did. Yeah, I yeah, just yeah. said, damn it. No, sorry. Does anybody listen? Like, are we talking about something else now? <laughs> Am I talking? I don't think I'm listening to myself at this point. Yeah, I need well, to, Maybe I need to stop drinking beers. We're all just very excited about the, the beers we're drinking and talking about. After the final pour that we're going to do after this, <laughs> might be a shit show <laughs> for me. I'm going to be honest, guys. Sorry. I might have to eat some bread before I leave here. Um, Ooh, bread sounds good. Yeah, so there it is. Number three, Apple Brandy Ryeway. I thought it was very good, and I hope they decide to do that again. Brandon, throwing over to you. What do you or yeah, yeah, what do you got? Yep. Uh, so for number three, I will go ahead and say I had a uh, big bad, uh, big bad Baptist mm-hmm. uh, pecan pie. What? Yeah, I had that uh, in June of this year, and it was phenomenal. It had like literally like the essence of pecan. There was like brown sugar. There was it, it was thick. And it was just, it was 
totally enjoyable like stout to have. That's funny. That's two pecan beers now. I did mine in my uh, <clears throat> runners up from Central Waters, yep. the pecan Kringle, and now you've got one there. Yeah, I wish I had another one of those because it, that was just so good. And I I brought it. When we went to uh, South Carolina. I cracked it, had it with my father in law. Well, actually, my whole family had it. Um, we shared it, and like everybody was just like head over heels about it. It was, Ooh, man. It was awesome. I'd like to find that another day. That sounds fantastic. Be good. Uh, stupid Clark. Stupid me. Here I am. Number Sorry three for guys, me. That's a 17% so beer talking. I'm gonna. So can, can I clarify this and and say this is the most interesting beer I well whatever you Clark. I'm just saying. What do you want to do? You can. You don't have to ask. And us. you just both had this on a show. It was Greenbush's Rage Black Ooh. IPA. That was actually I. That was close to actually being on my honorable mention. That's close it, to being on my list. Again, it might not be the best one I had, but that was the one that I dr- I remember drinking going, this is the most interesting, different beer I've had in a very long time. Like and that. to me, that makes it one of the best beers I had. Because I remember, remember it being bitter, roasty, sweet at the same time, somehow, and very easy to drink. Yeah, it was very good. All in one. I remember thoroughly enjoying it. i think we all had the same review of that yeah beer. we went to, into a discussion about black ipas too and um I, I have a love for them and when i see them it's like if it's done well like i guess a, a, a caveat if i see it i will buy it but not all of them are good but obviously it's it's one of those things that's like it's so interesting of a style to now to now to the point where i'm like white white stouts yeah i'm yeah. very much like Ooh, so good Intrigued by White Stouts, cinnamon, you know, props to Cinnamon Prost. And then Pipeworks, uh, hey dude, there's a beverage here. Yep. Oh yeah. And what was the, oh shit, there's another one. I forget the brewery. Uh, I don't know if Well, it's, Dragon's Milk does a white, uh, they did New that, Holland. But does. there's another one uh, in Wisconsin. I'll have to think about it. I Which, by the way, has anyone had the New Holland White Stout? I think I have. And I, think I, I, I don't think, think I have. White Stouts are amazing. I know I haven't. And. My wife asked me, like, like, I was drinking it last night while we were watching the morning show. Um, she was like, show, what, makes it, what makes it a white stout? And I was like, uh... Because it's white. It's, it's lighter. Well, because <laughs> it's, it's not the color of a stout. And it's not... They're, the roasted malts yes. are... It's, it, they're it's, not roasted as yeah, long, yeah. Exactly. Same but you malt, still get the roastiness yeah, from same it. Same malt build, but, you know, not as much roast, so... And I, I'm just looking at my untapped check-in of, of of rage on june 12th of this year that's when we did the episode i ended it with dare i say a Maltese. so even then i kind of knew what was coming but i'm looking at the stats on this it's 14.6 percent abv it's 156 ibu what i yeah. didn't think uh, which makes what's sense the ceiling of IBUs. Well, not re- I so, mean, one million. So especially when, it's like when a skull though, you know. I think we've talked about yeah, this. That's true. I think we've talked about this before in episodes where if you have especially a, a very high ABV beer um, or a very like sweet stout to balance that out, you have to like hit a whole bunch of high IBUs on it to make it like a beer, a beer that's palatable. Otherwise it's too sweet yep and, and not bitter enough so the ibus on there are kind of like tricky to see that because 14 percent, and it's a black ipa so there's that roasty sweetness like an ipa there is that malty sweetness to it depending on you know the style yeah. but a black ipa specifically you're dealing with the roastiness and the sweetness of a 14 i remember being beer. so surprised how sweet that was i mean it's, it's not overly sweet but yeah. for an ipa with 100 and whatever it was 56 ibus you're going, oh, this is kind of Which stupid. is funny. Have you guys, you guys have had Hop Stupid before from Lagunitas, right? Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. That's 90 IBUs. The good news about IPA. all this is I still have one bottle left. Ooh, can't wait for you to share that with us in 2022. We're going to we move will. on to. Shut up, Clark. We're going to move on to. Sorry, that was rude. That was really rude. That's very rude. <laughs> what do you think of the, the Freedom? Uh, uh, you are not wrong. This is fantastic. I mean, the just the nose on it getting yeah it's really it, good it smells like thanksgiving yeah which is fantastic this is a perfect the holiday turkey and sour. gravy yeah. and everything yeah, yeah. like I'm all the mashed potatoes <laughs> brussels sprouts green beans it's more dark meat than white i'm getting i don't know what, what kind of meat you guys are getting out of this <laughs> oh no, no meat. um we're gonna go into number two <laughs> <laughs> so this is it the final uh the final two beers of 2021 from all of us and we've already talked about this beer it was already brought up 
here we go. Mine was the Goose Island Phase 3, I'm a Bird, which I believe on the episode I said, if a baker would brew a beer, this would be it. From the dark chocolate, yep. the strawberry, vanilla. This beer was really close to being number one. Something else beat it out, but that beer uh, was definitely one of my favorites. Uh, so Brandon, thank you for sharing that because you did give me a can of that. We did that episode over Zoom, so it was really, really good. I mean, I already mentioned it, so I know that's why I was throwing it over to you. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, to go into my number two. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, I, so I, guess gonna... I, I guess I should have said something. No, I, I can't say. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I don't think we need to say anything else more yeah. about it. So my number two is actually a barrel aged cup of peanut butter coconut. Ooh, that's the one you and I had uh, in my backyard. Yep, I thoroughly enjoyed that beer. It's very good. Um, it had peanut butter. It had the coconut, and I was hesitant because I didn't know if the coconut would play so well together with the peanut butter. But it was just a very good compliment. The coconut and, did stand out. Yeah, it did, and. Like we had the can, it warmed. We, like we warmed it up a little bit, and it was just it was a phenomenal beer to drink. That and was just the day that you came by to hang out in the. That yard, was right? the the movie night. Was it the movie night? I think so. I think before the movies. I don't think so. I think it was. No, uh, maybe, yeah, my mom was in. Your town. mom was there. Yep, yep, there we go. Yep. <laughs> my mom. Sorry. Uh, yeah. No, that was that was a lot of fun, and we drank a couple of other fun beers that night. But yeah, that was that was really good. Two cuppas that I had this year was that one, and then the one on the Christmas episode, the cinnamon dusted one. Yep. I think that peanut butter coconut one. I don't know what I rated on tapped between the two, but I think that one was a little bit better. Peanut butter coconut, Tony. That's my name. Peanut butter coconut. Brandon gave it a four and a half. Tony it's gave it a four point seven five. Four point seven five. Yeah, that shit was good. And yes. I gave uh, it a one. No, that's a lie. It's four and a half. Okay. I, I really like that one too. I honestly completely forgotten about that. That's high up there. The high praise. Ones. So good. Uh, Clark, here we go. Your this number one two. was uh, mentioned, I believe, during my vacation beers way back, probably in April of 2021. This one was West Claw's Four Claw, a triple IPA, dry hopped with Eldorado, Azaka, Ooh. Citra, Mosaic. They claim it was inevitable. This was one picture you commented even on my untapped saying that looks delicious mm, I, it was I, the orangest or is that a word orangest sure it is, now. <laughs> it is now orangest juiciest most well-rounded triple ipa i think i'd ever ever had now maybe it was vacation that was talking to me but i mean you know that, that has to do that with was it, but i mean it, it still is a part of the experience my friend down there i'm ready to tell him i'm ready to send him a box with bubble wrap, Ziploc bags for Please leaks, for him to send a couple of four packs of that because that was phenomenal. Please make that a part of your uh, resolutions for this year. And uh, if you need, I mean, I know you have a, a chance to ship stuff, but if you want me to ship it, I'll ship it. That's my part. I think I will work on that this year, and that will be my side resolution. I, like I think that. that's a that's a fair trade. I'm surprised more. You know, IPAs or double dry hop for how many of those that I did drink this year? Oh, yeah. You're I mean, showing, I'm just oh. looking at the picture. We're yeah, both looking the at the right picture now. right it's now. <laughs> We're both juice. going, oh. <laughs> hey, you know, I kind of wish we had an orange uh, juice uh, double dry hopped uh, IPA with us right now. That looks really good. Well, or we can just make a uh, trip down to. And we talked about Westbrook on my vacation episode. Yes. I brought, I think you got a. Two claw, which is I, I think very we, good. Which I we learned that they that's two, three, four claw is the amount of hops they use in the beers. Yeah. Uh, the West two claw was very good. Yeah, yeah. You brought back random beers. Do we do an episode? Yeah, well, we did an episode. Yeah, we did. Clark there's also other ones that we drank that weren't on the episode. Yeah, you so, and I got together and and, and drank. Some whenever well. I get back to Charleston, which which is where they're located, I will. 100% go spend a few hours there. And I mentioned on the episode back in uh, the spring that I went there and got a barrel-aged uh, flight, which might not have been the best idea at 4 o'clock on a random Thursday the Why day not? before I was leaving vacation. But, uh, yeah, I need to get back to Westbrook pronto. This is it, everybody. We are coming down to our final beers for 2021, the end of the Maltese, and 
I'll kick it off. Here it is. My favorite beer of 2021. Oh, boy. I'm so excited. Ready? Here we go. It is Off Colors Beer for Tacos. Ooh, wow. That is my favorite beer for 2021. It was it, It's just such a refreshing beer. I, I, I made my own beer kind of based off the same idea. It's a Goza with salt and lime, and it does pair very well with tacos. That beer... I think I drink the most this year. Uh, I didn't check it in every time because I checked it in, you know, at least once or twice. I uh, don't need to check it in every time, but I did buy it a lot and I love it. It's just a nice, tart, refreshing beer. You can have it anytime. You can have it in the winter. You can have it in the spring. You can have it in the summer. And you can even have it in the fall. Those yeah, are four I, seasons. I remember drinking this uh, during the Super Bowl where we made queso fundido and we had chips and guac and salsa. And I'm going, <laughs> holy moly, this is fantastic. Holy moly. Thank you for correcting You're me. You're welcome. Uh, but yes, this was part of the mix pack I got from Off Color. And now that you mention this, oh boy, it's hard to. I mean, the whole put beer. Put this below uh, the beer from uh, Burgers. The, the whole beer for series. I think the only one I didn't have this year was, or the two that I didn't have was beer for golf and beer for hoops. Everything else I had this year. Uh, but beer for tacos is, is is regularly available, and it's just, uh, that beer just kind of hits everything that I want. It's a refreshing beer. It's just, just really good. So that's my number one beer for 2021. Congratulations, Off Color. You get my Malty of the Year. Wow. Brandon, that's, what do you got? A big deal. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, so I had a couple that I've been going back and forth on, but I, you know what? I'm going to go with what I wanted to do. Um, Jeez, now I want to know what the other ones are, too. Off mic. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I could talk about, I could talk about, like, my contenders. That no, didn't we're make, at, like, three hours now yeah. for the show. Um, <laughs> so this was another beer that we had while we were camping. Uh, it is Super Nebula. Oh, shit, that's not where I thought you were going. Breakfast with, with Hayden. Wow. Wow. I thought you were going to go with... Uh, Gates of Smordor? Yeah. That, that was the fucking, other one that I was... You know, the fact it didn't end up in my honorable mentions, that's what I mean. I don't know why I just I counted out our camping trip for some reason, but the, that s'mores stout is the best s'more stout I've ever had in my life. Yep. But that beer, holy shit, is so good. I yeah. totally forgot about that. That that blew me away, and I remember we, we kind of raved about that. We raved about you know the Gates of Smordor, too. We like, raved about all those yeah, beers yeah. on that show. That was like the best beer show I think we've ever done, um, because Clark then, wasn't and, on it, and all the beers were amazing. Yeah. And so well, with that, though, honorable mention to uh, Pipeworks yeah. oh. for their uh, return to barrel-aged beers. Which, speaking of which, at this point, I think all their, well, they, that whole release is coming out soon. They yeah, they got another one. Yeah. I think I forwarded you guys the email. You did. The new one that's coming out. We do that. We do that as a group. What are we doing? We could. Okay. Um, but yeah, uh, Super Nebula, Block 15. Totally forgot about that. Shout out to Block 15. The Breakfast first, with Hayden. Also the first spruce beer I ever loved. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. From Block 15. Clark, before I go to the bathroom, <laughs> what's your number one beer? We're talking about a Cruz Blanca beer. Oh, shit. Welcome, Cl- Cruz Blanca, to the show. Yeah, never <laughs> had a Cruz Blanca beer. I mean... We, tried we have. Have. It's a 2020 beer have that was released in 2020, if I need to clarify myself, that I drank in March 2021 at a lunch I had with my wife at Cruz Blanca. I ordered Senor Bandito, Ooh. which is an imperial stout aged in rye whiskey barrels with sweet cherry, cinnamon, and spices. Holy shit. Holy majolies. That was <laughs> fantastic. Even my wife, Jessica, was like, this is really good. And she has about four to five sips of barrel-aged stouts a year. Except and for double barrel. Totally agreed. So I ended up ordering another bottle of it, luckily, uh, that they released back in the late spring. Fantastic. And they, they did this again this year in 2021. I do have a bottle of it. I've read that it's a bit heavy on the cinnamon and cherry. Even the brewer uh, agreed that it was a bit heavy. He went a bit heavy on the flavors there have i mentioned heavy enough times? can you say heavy one more time heavy heavy flavors <laughs> mm. but i'm excited to see what 2021 holds but this was phenomenal as i've mentioned a number of times and i think tony you have as well cinnamon in barrel aged stouts is one of my favorite things in the world brandon is so, on that same page for sure we yeah. love cinnamon on this show so <laughs> this is why this cinnamon. beer is why i ended up ordering and pre-ordering a couple of cruz blanca's uh 
barrel aged stouts this year and picked them up. I'm excited to try them all. I have had zero of them this year. So I will say this. Um, we're going to have to show up, but we didn't end up talking about King Henry. But King Henry is like the honor, <laughs> like the, the, uh, if we life, haven't mentioned it in a lifetime, yeah, lifetime achievement award yeah. goes to Goose Island's King Henry barrel aged barley wine. But congratulations to all the breweries and beers that we have chose because, uh, the number one episode was with Lake Effect. And our number one breweries, as far as beers are concerned, are Cruz Blanca, Block 15, and Off Color. So those are the official full winners here. The number one winners of uh, the Maltese 2021. You know, what, what's interesting, though, too, is the last, we've done this two years in a row now. Each year, we've had a beer that was like the standalone blowout beer. For sure. And I think it was the old stock the 2000 old stock yeah. last year. And then Clark wasn't a part of that because he didn't Henry. care about him. Um, but I think so I actually, don't. so I put that, I think it's like my number one last year, but um, totally, um, I, I think moving forward, I want to look for beers. If, if we all have like a, an agreement that this one is like just out of the water. Absolutely. Then it's like that one gets put on the pedestal, and then uh-huh. we then everything yeah. else and then we is, get everything, yeah. which is why King Henry was not our number. Yeah, you one. can't. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's I mean, not that's fair just, to all yeah. the other beers. Well, I mean, we even you know the episode hasn't come out yet, but we started drinking through some of the bourbon counties, and I did want to throw one in there, even for an honorable mention or maybe even my top ones, yep. but I kind of went from you know November. Yeah, yeah. Blames. Yeah. Actually, cool. Uh, <laughs> cola <laughs> um well that's it guys that's it we did it Maltese, and this is the end of 2021 uh guys got real quick clark what's your resolution for 2022 baby my resolution and it's unfortunately kind of similar to last year uh well no it, let, let me let me start over ask me again clark what is your resolution for 2022 try some other freaking styles of beer instead of what instead of barrel aged stouts ipas and some pale ales you know you know they're more styles oh no i guys. know i know i just i was just wondering like have you what? guys have any, any different styles besides stouts uh ipas and pale ales yeah uh, look at you our, have yeah yeah look at our you, you, you never told me you were supposed to tell me there's a bunch dude so that's my, that's my thing I try like some that. saisons maybe no. i'll know what a saison tastes like now oh shout out to the hip hops uh tony Brandon. Brandon. oh well he, <laughs> i'm running this i'm running this ship right so, now <laughs> Actually, you asked me. Um, I would say that uh, we d- you guys haven't had a chance and we haven't talked about it yet. I will give you guys some of it tomorrow because we've got another podcast to record. But I brewed my brown ale and I will say the results are good. So I think what I'm going to do is fine tune my, my resolution this year is to fine tune my brewing and to, to homebrew and to, to brew a little bit more and kind of uh, go a bit further with my uh you know, uh, practices of, of brewing. That's my, I like it. it. Brandon, how about you? What's your resolution? Drink more Belgians. Ooh, Ooh, I like that. It's a style that I, I love, but often not not ignore, but there's just so much other stuff out there, but same here. I, I, I ignore them a lot. But and going you, to Binnie's more, yeah. or like any other place and just seeing the styles and like the uniqueness that's out there. Um, yeah, I, I I definitely want to dive into that so much so that we could we could and should probably do an episode. On, Absolutely, like, we have not done a Belgian specifically beer Belgian beers. Well, that's good. So Clark, you've got more styles. I've got brewing a little bit more and fine tuning it. Brandon's got Belgian beers. I think twenty twenty two is going to be pretty good. We can do it. Everybody, thank you for listening to the Malting Hour. Uh, thanks. Thanks for everyone. This. Yeah, um, we got a lot more listens this year. I didn't I didn't go through that as well. A lot more listens, a lot more likes, a lot more followers, a lot more streams. So we're glad you guys like the show, and we're going to keep uh, bringing it to you, even if Clark's not around all the time. Spoiler alert, he's not going to be around all the time. Uh, Brandon, <laughs> I love you, man. Love you too, bud. Clark, we'll see you when we fucking see you. Yeah, what a day. All right, bye. <laughs> <laughs> this has been The Malting Hour. Be sure to follow us on all social media by searching The Malting Hour and at themaltinghour.com. You can also follow us on social media platforms individually. Brandon can be found on Instagram as bmdub81, on Twitter bdub81, on Untapped bdub drinks beer. Tony can be found on Instagram and Untapped under Ace of Phelps Chicago, on Twitter the Ace of Phelps Chicago. Clark can be found as Clarkowski on all three. 
Be sure to subscribe, like, and rate the show on your preferred podcast listening platform. Until next time, cheers from all of us at The Malting Hour. Thank you.